Hey friends, Patrick here and today let's create the old .NET 7 ASP.NET Core hosted world in .NET 8. We don't have this template anymore, meaning a Blazor WebAssembly application ASP.NET Core hosted where you have your client project Blazor only, then your server project, which is a web API in essence, and then also your shared project. We did similar stuff already in past videos, but now I want to show you how you can rebuild the same, the exact same architecture you know and probably love from .NET 7, now also in .NET 8. And that's pretty much it. If you like this, learn something, please guys hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. It does make a difference and help me so much to create more videos. Thank you so much to all my patrons already. If you want to support me, please check out the link in the video description. Now I can only say let's start with the tutorial. All right, first for reference, the .NET 7 project, meaning what I did, I created a Blazor WebAssembly app, the old stuff I'm sure you already know. Name for this thing is uh, not important, but important here is ASP.NET Core hosted, right? When you select this, then you get something similar to this project here. We have the client, which is Blazor, frontend, spa-like stuff, great stuff. Then we have the server project as well. This is our web API with the weather forecast controller and so on. And then also the shared project with the weather forecast model. Now in .NET 8, at least for release candidate 2, we don't have that anymore. And Microsoft told us that they are actually, or they actually don't want or don't think it's necessary to add such a template to .NET 8. So let's just build this thing by ourselves, shall we? What I do now is, there it is, Visual Studio 2022. This is the preview edition, just in my case, because I'm using the release candidate of Blazor .NET 8 in essence. So I create a new project, but in your case, if .NET 8 is already there, the full release, then you can do this with Visual Studio 2022 as well, not the preview edition, hopefully. and. To build the exact the exact same architecture, what we do is we actually start with an ASP.NET Core Web API project. All right, so this is the thing that we want to select or down here, it's in essence the same stuff. And now let's call this, well, let's say Blazor Wasm.NET 8 ASP.NET Core hosted. This is a great name. And this is the solution name, but we get an API here. So the project will be the API. So let's call this API or server. Maybe then it would be the same thing really um, compared to the .NET 7 template. So here we have this beautiful name. Let me just copy this because I need this. <laughs> and then a server will be the web API. We hit next and this is totally fine. We use controllers, configure for HTTPS and so on. We hit create and then we should get our web API project in the complete solution. Awesome. Now the next thing we can do is already, again, we compare this to the old architecture here. We want the, the class library here where we have the models shared, for instance, the weather forecast. All right. So let's just right click the solution and add a new project. Real quick, it is not long until the .NET Web Academy is open for enrollment and this will be the 2024 edition, meaning a complete new program with .NET 8. You learn pretty much everything you need to become a .NET Web Developer, Web APIs, Entity Framework, SQL Server and of course now Blazor with all its new features all render modes, server, WebAssembly, auto, the static server side rendering, stream rendering, all that stuff is covered in the Academy. Of course, you get access to the .NET Web Academy community. And when you want to be the first to know when enrollment is open and get early access to the 2024 edition, then please check out the link in the video description and join the waiting list. Looking forward to seeing you there. And now let's continue with the tutorial, which is then a class library. Again, we hit next. Now this is the name, that's why I copied it. And we call this shared, create, create, awesome. This is our shared one. And now it's getting interesting. We need the client project. So back to Visual Studio, there it is. 
and right click the solution again, add new project. And now we select C Sharp, all platforms, and then Blazor. Now, please, again, pay attention here. It's not Blazor WebAssembly app empty, not Blazor server, nothing like that. With .NET 8, we get Blazor Web App and Blazor WebAssembly standalone app. And for our older architecture, where you don't want to use or don't want to know anything about render modes and static server-side rendering, all that stuff, you just want your old world that worked beautifully, then you select Blazor WebAssembly standalone app. This is important, this is the most important step here, Blazor WebAssembly standalone app, we still have this with .NET 8. So let's select this one here. Next, again, the name and client it shall be. We hit next and as you can see now, we don't have the option to add or to select ASP.NET Core hosted, right? This is what we're going to build here by ourselves because we still have to configure some stuff. .NET 8, the preview in my case, no authentication, HTTPS, we don't need a PWA. Include sample pages, why not? With that, we get the weather forecast stuff, for instance. And create. And after that, already looks quite similar to the uh, .NET 7 version, right? So here you see .NET 7 was, um, this is the old architecture, old, still great architecture in my opinion. And at least for small to medium sized apps. And here now the .NET 8 variation. But currently, of course, wouldn't work. Well, the web API would work, but not the Blazor experience. So the server is still or already our starting project. This is important. Now, the next steps are when you have a look at the dependencies here and then if not frameworks packages, then here you see Microsoft ASP.NET Core Components WebAssembly Server. This is what we need in our .NET 8 web API here, because here you can see packages only the Swagger stuff. So let's manage the NuGet packages and go to browse. Can make this bigger, but this maybe. And we now search for web assembly server. There it is already. And this should be the one Yep, Microsoft ASP.NET Core Components WebAssembly Server. So install this thing. As you can see here, I included the pre-release versions. Again, in your case, this might be different. So don't worry about that. We hit accept. And hopefully now we should see, yep, there is our package. This is important. So the whole connection between the web API and the front end Blazor stuff works. All right, so we've got our ASP.NET Core hosted application here. Now, the next steps. In essence, we only have to configure our program CS and also add references to these projects here. So for instance, here you can see that the API in .NET 7 references the client project and the shared project. So let's do exactly that as well in our .NET 8 version. Let me close this one here. And now here we have no project references, of course. So we just here right click add project reference and again, client and shared because, well, the shared one is important because we will move the weather forecast class to the shared project, but let's do that at the end. The uh, more important step is the program CS here on the server, a project. So first the dependencies, then program CS, and then in the end we move some stuff around. And here now also dependencies, we add another one, in this case only shared. All right, so that's this. And now the program CS. Again, let's compare this real quick with .NET 7. As you can see here, we have uh, something like add controllers with views. We have add razor pages. We have used WebAssembly debugging. And then down here, Blazor framework files, static files and also razor pages and fallback to file index HTML. All that is necessary as well now for our program CS because we don't see it, it here. And well, the easiest way to do it is just copy and paste the lines, really, that's everything. So let's just do this first, these two, and instead of add controllers, now it's add controllers with views and add razor pages. All right, so this is the first step. Then we saw use WebSemd debugging. You can 
anytime uh, hover over the methods, then you see what they actually do. This one has middleware needed for debugging Blazor WebAssembly applications inside Chromium DevTools. So with that, you get the feature that Microsoft told us is that amazing. And it really is that you can debug the server and the front end both at the same time with Visual Studio. Of course, you can still do this with the Blazor Web App template in .NET 8, but with that now you can also do this in your .NET 8 Blazor Web Assembly ASP.NET Core hosted app and then also deploy it as one single app to Azure or whatever you want to use for this. Now use Blazor framework files and static files. Put that here, as you can see, configures the application to serve Blazor WebAssembly Framework files from the root path and static files, enabled static file serving for the current request path. And the last one or the last three, overwrite this thing here, map razor pages as endpoints and then fall back to the index HTML. So this is our program CS. Now let's run this already and just have a look how this well, looks. There we are, and we see we still open Swagger. So there might be something else we have to do, right? Let's go back to Visual Studio. And now when we again go to .NET 7, there it is. Let's have a look here at the properties and then the launch settings JSON. And now, for instance, let's just have a look at this block here. We see this inspect URI. And when we have a look at the .NET 8 project, same thing, launch settings JSON, then we see the launch URL is Swagger. So this is why Swagger is still opening. And the other thing here is there, well, this is used to tell the debugger how to connect to the browser's dev tools for debugging. So we also need this line, all right? And we don't need this line here, launch URL swagger, all right? So actually what we can do is we can, well, look for this and then replace it with that line. All right, format this again, maybe. Yep, now it looks better. And now run this again. It is hopefully rebuilding. All right, there we are. And you see, you got the loading screen and uh, we still have the option here. We can reload this, make the make the test call to our API. This is what I love about, well, about that architecture. And in the end, that you can test your API with Swagger still and also have a look at your Blazor application. But now this thing is not the web service call, right? We see the weather forecast data, but when we have a look at the code, then we see that we have this new folder architect of holder structure where we have the, the layout with the nav menu. And as you can see here, when we go to weather, it is accessing the weather page here. So this thing, and we also have the the weather forecast class in here and the call here well it only looks like a real web service call but it's actually using the sample data here right so here you see sample data and then weather json so this is not what we want of course right so we have to change that this is the last step then and what we can do in essence is we move the weather forecast class from the server to our shared project and delete it then here from the server this thing is also not necessary. We can change the namespace here. This is now shared. And in the controller, we now say, where is it? There it is. Should, yep, there it is using Blazor and so on shared. So now we are really using the class from our shared class library in the, in the web API. And same thing for now our weather page here. So instead of the sample data, we just use our weather forecast controller, save that. And now to really see the difference, let's just get 50 entries here. We restart the application. It is now this thing is rebuilding. Why not? Now let's do this one more time. Okay restarting we go to weather and as you can see we got 50 entries let's try that one more time just for demonstration purposes restart the application now this thing is rebuilding 
and we have our 20 entries and every single time it's random data. Isn't that great? And with that, you have the older architecture. You can do all the client related stuff here in the client project. You have your web API, which is used to host the whole application and you've got your shared class library. Isn't that nice? What do you think? This is how it works. I hope you learned something. If so, please guys hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. Please, please, please subscribe. It does make a difference and help me create more content for you. If you want to support me even further, please check out my Patreon page. Thank you so much to all my patrons already. I love you forever, guys. And now I can only say thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you next time. Take care.